there are new artificial intelligence applications like ChatGPT that will write entire essays or speeches for you. It's, it's huge. And I'll show you the quality of this stuff. I asked ChatGPT to write an introduction to my next guest to talk about what a menace this new technology might be and what experts like Elon Musk and Bill Gates are now saying. What I'll read now is what this artificial intelligence wrote in my voice. Here we go. I've put in the auto cue. Good evening, folks. Tonight, I want to talk about a subject that's been making waves in the tech world, artificial intelligence, or AI for short. Now, some of you might be thinking, Andrew, why should I care about this fancy tech stuff? Well, let me tell you, AI is not just some abstract concept that's only relevant to computer nerds and Silicon Valley billionaires. AI is already shaping our lives in ways that we might not even realize. Think about it. Have you ever used Siri, Alexa, or Google Assistant? Have you ever gotten a recommendation for Netflix or Amazon based on your viewing and buying history? All these experiences are made possible by AI algorithms that analyze vast amounts of data and make predictions based on patterns they detect. But AI is not just about convenience or entertainment. It has the potential to revolutionize fields like healthcare, finance, transportation and more. With AI, we can analyze medical images to detect diseases earlier, predict market trends to make smarter investments and design autonomous vehicles that can reduce accidents and traffic congestion. Of course, there are also concerns about AI, such as privacy and bias and job displacements. We need to have a serious discussion about how to ensure that AI is developed and used in a responsible and ethical manner. Tech leaders like Elon Musk have been warning about the dangers of AI for quite some time now. He's even gone as far as to call it a potential existence an existential threat to humanity standing it possesses a greater threat than nuclear weapons. So there you have it, folks. It's not just a buzzword of sci-fi fantasy. It's already here. Well, joining us today to discuss this topic is Kosha Garda, a media commentator and founder and CEO of Recastle, and that's a media and tech incubator, by the way, an advisory firm. Kosha Gardner, look, that's the end of it. That's what it wrote. That introduction written by ChatGTPT of the it went out of its way to point out, look, it was pretty good when I was doing an introduction to how it's pretty bad. And by, you know, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Apple co-founder, Steve Wozniak, and dozens of other tech leaders, they've just signed an open letter saying, hang on, it's actually a threat to civilization." <laughs> but they'd had me reading out how, oh, look, it says wonderful things. So how concerned should we be? Yeah, not, not bad, Andrew, I have to say that you just attached that to a hologram and uh, I can go home. That was just uh, the, the segment and the framing right there. And, you know, the remarkable thing is it probably pumped it out in a matter of seconds, whereas it would take a human writer a little bit longer than that to do that. And I, I think that sort of makes the, the civilizational threat point. Um, look, AI innovation is, is at an inflection point right now. And it's a really pernicious issue because lots of very, very smart people, such as some of those you just mentioned, don't agree with what's happening and is ultimately a force for good or a force for evil even and you know i would boil it down this way that on the one side of the the ledger the trade-off ledger is you take it to its end point it it just really accelerates computing power and analytical power which is going to turbocharge innovation unlike anything we've ever seen. Think of applications for that in medicine, you know, accelerating the pace with which we find cures for cancer and Alzheimer's and things like that, or irrigation and solving poverty and hunger and all of that. On the flip side, the, the negative no thing is the that, Frankensteinian the nightmare. Right. Yeah, well, the speech, the speech but even like the end state I'm of it is the... With. It has me saying things <laughs> more positive than I possibly would do. Yeah, and that, look, that's one issue that ultimately if machines are, are taking over speech and a, a free expression and thought, it's kind of the next level of what we're seeing already happening with kind of the internet and search engines and all of that influencing thought and opinion and information access. For sure, it's uh, it, can, it might displace hundreds of millions of jobs, such as, you know, we're joking that we can go home, but, you know, that you can see how that could happen, including artistic jobs and white collar jobs that we believe need the human touch, maybe not. And then the end logical endpoint of that is, uh, I was saying, a Frankensteinian nightmare, which is the idea that humans' best creation will ultimately overpower us and, um, you know, we lose control of our own destiny, lose interhuman connection, lose connection with the divine and, you know, fail to recognize life as we know it on the planet itself and also lose control of arguments when they tell us what to think. I mean, incredible. Kosher Garda, thank you so much indeed for your time.